Patriot Prime Reviews is a channel for adult collectors and may not be suitable for children under 13 years of age. Viewer discretion is advised. Hey, what's going on guys? Patriot Prime here once again with another Transformers review. But before I get started, I need you guys to do me a favor. If you're watching this video right here and are not a subscriber of Patriot Prime Reviews, please hit that subscribe button right now. It won't cost you a thing, but will help me and my channel out tremendously. Also, make sure and visit my sponsor, ToyHacks.com. ToyHacks provides reproduction and upgrade decal sets for Transformer toys from Generation 1 to the latest modern figures. Make sure and stop by the ToyHacks Armory, where they can equip your figures with new weaponry in multiple colors, and Toy Stages provides backdrops for figure displays and photography. Each purchase with Toy Hacks earns you RoboSense that can be used for future purchases. You can check your balance anytime in your cart. Toy Hacks is a company run by collectors for collectors. So check out ToyHacks.com and make your collection stand out from the rest. And tell them Patriot Prime sent you. Now, on to the review. The featured bot in this video is Transformers War for Cybertron Earthrise. Sunstreaker. Now taking a quick look at the packaging, you've got Sunstreaker here in robot mode. Transformers War for Cybertron Earthrise. Side of the box features Sunstreaker with his hairdryer weapon. I have hated the looks of that weapon since this figure was first announced. Back of the box, you got Sunstreaker with his hairdryer in robot mode and vehicle mode. This side, more of that fantastic Earthrise artwork. So now, without further ado, let's get Sunstreaker opened up out of this packaging and check him out. And welcome to Patriot Prime Reviews. Now, once you get Sunstreaker all opened up and out of the packaging, you'll see he does come with a sheet of instructions. And just like all the modern instructions we've been getting lately, these are very well illustrated and very easy to follow. We also have Sunstreaker here. His hairdryer weapon comes already attached to his back, and we'll get to that here in a bit. Now, the first thing I noticed when I got him out of his packaging is he is very two-tone. The yellow on the chest and the yellow on the forearms do not match the yellow on the rest of the figure. You can tell what's yellow plastic and yellow paint. The section right here, the chest, is clear plastic or translucent plastic painted yellow, and the forearms are black plastic painted yellow. So I really wish there was some better color matching. Other than that, the figure looks great. I love the head sculpt, very Generation 1. I really dig this design underneath the translucent plastic on the chest. I think that is so cool, and it looks a lot better than a lot of the translucent parts we've been getting that just show robot bits underneath. He is very Generation 1 accurate. We take a G1 Sunstreaker and compare him here. I love the similarities. This is really, really cool. They give him these black sections here on the shins, which look just like Generation 1. He's got the black forearms. And what's really cool, the Generation 1 Sunstreaker has these missiles on his shoulder. And if you look at Earthrise, he's got those molded in. That is a nice nod to us G1ers. I really appreciate that. Now, articulation for the guy, head is on a ball joint, can go up and down, all around. And that's actually a hinge right there. So ignore that. That's not part of the articulation for the head. Mine's really tight, though. Arms can go up and down, in and out. You can do a complete 360. There is an elbow rotation. There is no wrist rotation. Waist can do a complete 360. Legs can go up and back. Once again, very tight joints. I love that. There is a knee bend and an ankle tilt. So lots of articulation on the guy. I dig it. He's really, really cool. Now let's take a look at the hairdryer weapon here on the back. You just Pop this off. It's on a peg, so I can go right in there. And you're supposed to put it in his fist like so. Unfortunately, it barely fits, at least mine. I mean, it's super loose. It just pops right in there and will not press down any further because of the black forearm. I mean, 
It just, it falls right out, and that sucks. Of course, I'm not a fan of that anyway. Like I said over and over again, that looks like a hairdryer. He, like, retired from the Autobots and became a hairdresser. I do not like that weapon whatsoever. It's going to stay on his back. And I kind of like to have it pointing up like so, which gives him yet another more Generation 1 look. Now, the G1 Sunstreaker, his weapon was you popped a fist out and plugged in a missile. So he either had a missile hand or gun hand, kind of like Shockwave. I wish Sunstreaker came with something like that. If you have Trailbreaker, you have Trailbreaker's weapon right here, you can slide it in his fist. It's a little tight, but it does work. So you can give this Sunstreaker more of a G1 look. I think that's really cool. But, like I said, that's Trailbreaker's weapon, and it doesn't fit really good. So any 3D printers out there, there you go. There's a cool option. Now, fortunately for my Sunstreaker, I've got the Centurion drone pack, so I have this weapon right here. This is supposed to be Cliff Jumper's glass gas gun, but I think it looks really good in Sunstreaker's hand. So now I have my Sunstreaker all armed and ready for battle. Now let's get him transformed into vehicle mode. The first thing we're going to do is remove the weaponry, take the gun out of his hand, and flip this section around. I believe that's called the engine intake. I don't know. I'm not that big of a car guy. So flip that back around. Now you're going to take the legs, and you're going to transform his legs the old Combiner Wars style. So you're going to separate the leg here and just collapse it in on itself like so. Do that on both legs. Now you're going to take the feet, bring this section down here, flip him around, take the heel spur, fold that back into the blue plastic, and then just connect the feet back like so, and squeeze these together. And this, of course, will form the front of the car. Now you're going to give a 180 at the waist, you're going to take the chest section, flip this up, take Sunstreaker's head, fold that down into the chest, and press this section down, like so. Get everything squeezed together and tabbed in. So now we have the entire front of the car. Now you're going to rotate again another 180, bringing the rear section of the car around. So you have that going on. Take the arms rotate those back, take the fists, we'll go ahead and put those in, and now you're going to bring this section down, forming the rear of the car, do that on both sides. Now take the arms, rotate around to where the yellow section is facing up, and we're just going to tab those in. Got to line those tabs up just right, get them all pressed together, tabbed together, and there we have Sunstreaker in vehicle mode. And I think that looks sharp. Unfortunately, you can really see that two-tone popping out again right there on the roof of the vehicle and here on the back. But other than that, that is a very sharp-looking vehicle. I love how the front end works. The front end actually has a faux front end for the feet. So pretty ingenious. I dig that. Love the wheels. The wheels, for once, aren't clipped in. They actually have hubcaps. Looks really good. The tinted blue here for the windows looks awesome. As I said, I dig the inside of that translucent plastic. It looks really good. Lots of molded details. The engine or intake looks great on vehicle mode. It may not work for robot mode one bit, but it looks outstanding on vehicle mode. Great paint applications. You got the black stripe here on the back, the, high, the headlights, bumper here on the front, silver for the rims. I dig it. I really like his vehicle mode. Just hate that two-tone look. I wish they could have done that just a little bit better. And of course, here is Earthrise Sunstreaker with his G1 counterpart. Another thing I wish Earthrise had is a silver spoiler on the back. Other than that, a great homage to that original Generation 1 toy. And now for some quick size comparisons, here is Transformers War for Cybertron Earthrise Sunstreaker 
with Generation 1 Optimus Prime, Generation 1 Sunstreaker, his brother, War for Cybertron Siege Sideswipe, and Earthrise Wheeljack. The Transformers War for Cybertron Earthrise Sunstreaker is a pretty cool figure. I'll admit it, when this guy was first announced, I had no interest in him whatsoever. He just did not look good to me at all. But then after I got him in hand, I really appreciated all the Generation 1 throwbacks, and he actually looks very cartoon accurate. That also being said, I really wish Hasbro would have paid more attention to that paint detail. I mean, I cannot look at this figure without noticing that two-tone. It's like it just slaps me in the face. I also am not a big fan of the weapon he came with. I wish it would have folded in half, like I believe it was the 30th anniversary Sunstreaker that came out a few years ago, or something to make it look a little bit more like a weapon, opposed to, as I've said, a hairdryer. So there you go, guys. Transformers War for Cybertron Earthrise Sunstreaker. So, does a Transformers War for Cybertron Earthrise Sunstreaker belong in your collection? Well, with this one, I'm a little bit tore. I love the Generation 1 throwbacks on this guy. I think those are amazing, especially the molded-in missiles on the shoulders. I really didn't even notice that until I started doing the review, so I think that is cool. He looks very cartoon accurate. I dig it, but what I don't dig is the paint scheme. I really wish Hasbro paid a little bit more attention to the paint on this guy because I cannot unsee the differences between the chest and the rest of the molded plastic. You can definitely tell what's paint and what's plastic. And I mean, even sitting back on the shelf, that's all I see. And it's very, very disappointing. Also, the weapon. I hate that. It looks great here on the back of the figure. That should have been a permanent attachment that you could like rotate around. But as a gun, I said it over and over, it looks like a damn hairdryer. So that, that sucks for me. Now, if you're a Sunstreaker fan, like my buddy Kato from Kato's Collection, I think you're really going to like the guy. But then again, being a Sunstreaker fan, you may be disappointed. So like I said, I'm tore on this guy and... I really don't know. Maybe wait till he goes on clearance. That's that's it. I just I just I want to like him a lot more than I do and I'm just disappointed with him. Now guys, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to click that bell icon to get notified when I upload new reviews. Also, if you're in any position to help the channel out, I have a YouTube membership option and I now have a Patreon. I've been asked over and over again if I would do a Patreon page. I finally broke down last week and did one. So first off, big shout out and thank you to my two brand new Patreons, Matthew Sibley and D. Bache, Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. And big shout out to Rico Redstar who has recently joined my YouTube membership. So guys, Thank you so much. It's your support that keeps me going. Guys, once again, this is Patriot Prime signing out. hoo -ah!